appreciate you stopping by and checking out this video from Netflix. And after the video, if you have any questions or comments, just put them below. Hit that subscribe button, like the video if you do. And today we're going to talk about swing trading indicators. Before we do, let's talk about swing trading. And it's often described as being a time period that you trade or how long you hold a position for. But a better way to understand it is basically you're taking part in one clean swing in the market. And to do that, a lot of traders will rely on trading indicators to find those opportunities. So when you use indicators for swing trading, you know, that's fine. But as a trader, you should have some knowledge of price action and price patterns. All right. Nothing beats being able to read the market in real time. Now, if you day trade, like you know that you're prone to news events. You're prone to a slip of the tongue from a politician. Uh, all those can just send markets falling, right? And honestly, day trading can be a pretty hectic way to make a living or even, to even just add a few extra bucks, you know, every week to your bottom line. The good thing about swing trading is you're not really affected by those little minor hiccups in price. And really, it's not a prerequisite for time, but a lot of swing traders will use daily charts. That's what I do. You come in after the market closes. During that time, scan for setups that fit the trading criteria. So essentially, within a larger trend in a market, there's going to be smaller moves in both directions. Swing traders, depending on their trading approach, will look for either a reversal or a continuation movement in price. Again, there's a lot of traders who believe that swing trading is time frame dependent. But for me, unlike them, I look at swing trading as, as I mentioned, I'm just trading a good swing in the market. Looking at this image here, with a reversal, swing traders will look for a pullback in price. And at some point, that pullback is going to end. Price is going to reverse. And a trader is going to look to enter a trade in the direction of that reversal. And some traders are going to use the longer term trend structure direction. Others are going to use what the price action on the short term trend directions are pointing to. And when you play both directions, you can have the opportunity to trade twice as many times, right? There's more opportunities. Swing traders that look for continuations often are looking for just a pause in the current direction. And once price breaks from that pause and continues to move, a swing trader will look for a position. And generally, once a trader is in a position, price is just allowed to advance until either a profit target's hit or momentum starts to reverse, right? And if there's adverse price action, swing traders will exit their positions as their original trade signal is no longer working out. That swing is over. So what is a indicator? What is a swing trading indicator? Well, they come in three categories, momentum, trend, and volume, right? All swing indicators are going to use the price of the instrument and or the volume of the trading activity in the calculation of them. So if we look at momentum indicators designed to show how strong price movement is, right? They can also be used to trade divergence and to measure overextensions in a market. The most common ones that people use are the RSI, the MACD. I'm talking about trend indicators, to show the general direction of price, including lack of direction. Essentially, moving averages smooth out the price bar information on the chart. And they just display it as a moving line on your chart. Right? Moving averages, the most popular, right? As are trend lines when they're drawn properly. Traders generally use EMAs, exponential moving averages. And all the AMA does, it just gives more weight to the most current price, right? Just makes it react faster to price movements. Volume indicators show the amount of buying or selling volume taking place at a moment in time on your chart. So what traders will do, design a trading strategy using none to all of those indicators, right? To help determine the time to buy or sell. And as mentioned, I'm gonna keep on repeating this, knowledge of price action and the ability to read a chart is vital for a trader. So what are the best indicators? It's a good question, right? But here's the truth. What I find to be the best could be different than what you find to be the best or what others are suggesting. The truth is we're all right. If an indicator presents information 
that leads you to successful trading, well, then it's the best for you. I'm going to present my own opinion based on experience. Now, although my primary chart is the daily chart, these indicators on any time frame will work. They'll also work for position trades, day trades if you want. It doesn't matter. And I'll be honest, as my own trading evolved over the years, I changed indicators. And eventually I got rid of most of them. And from the list, you can design your own swing trading strategy. Right? And I just want you to keep in mind when you do that, that a complex strategy is no better than a simple strategy. Right? Use what you need, just discard the rest of them. So let's start with number one. It's a moving average. And there are a lot of different averages you can use. Simple moving averages, hull moving averages, weighted moving averages. They all have a different calculation, okay? But they need the one thing that you're looking on your chart at, price bars, right? You can see what price is doing. There's also this rabbit hole that people like to go down of trying to find the best length. One of the most popular ones for shorter term trading, like swing trading, is 10 to 20 periods. You can use the EMA or the SMA formula. For myself, I have always used the 20 period EMA. I don't change that. And to determine the trend, we don't need to rely on crosses of multiple moving averages. You know, if you look at this chart, the only question you have to ask is, what side of the average is price generally on? If you waited for a cross of price on the average or the slope of the average or a crossover of different averages, you're going to learn why these are called lagging indicators. But just by looking at this 20 EMA, we see a few things. When price pulls away from the average, we can determine that volatility has picked up. And depending on the price action, we could see an exhaustion thrust and potentially a short trade setting up. We could also see price pull back to an area around the average where a trader can look for reversals back in the direction of the trend. So with an understanding of reversal chart patterns, you got to know some of these. A trader could look to buy around the low of the pullback. With an understanding of the volatility as seen on the left, traders could sell around the high of the move, right? One clean swing. Now, you're not going to always get the exact bottom or the exact top of the swing, but that meet in the middle, that's a really good path to profits right there. Number two, MACD. It's a momentum indicator. It uses moving averages to determine the momentum. And the standard settings, 12, 26, and 9, I actually prefer 3, 10, 16 settings. Otherwise known as the 310 oscillator. So with those settings, use the fast line as a read on momentum. The slower line you could use as a general trend direction. And with those swings of the fast line, we can also determine if divergence is taking place on the chart. And I marked divergence with the letter D. And in this example, price makes a lower swing low but the indicator puts in a higher low. A swing trader would look for a price action led entry into a long position here. And you can see if you just trade that swing up, it's a good trade. Now those red lines, they're gonna show how momentum is used. The MACD fast line puts in a high and it's higher than the recent swings on the indicator, right? The swing highs on the indicators. This shows that there's momentum to the upside, new momentum to the upside. Okay, it makes a difference. Swing traders, you would consider that to be a strong leg up and you would look to take advantage of a further move to the upside. And this example here, price is just consolidated at the highs of the momentum move. A swing trader, you're just looking for a move to the upside from this tight trading range, that's it. So using divergence and the fast line momentum swing is a really good approach to using this indicator. And I've never used the crossing of the lines or the zero line as an indication of anything. Never used it. Bollinger Bands for number three. These are going to show you the volatility and momentum in the market. Right? It's a pretty popular trading indicator. It does have some merit depending on how you're going to use it. Essentially, you're going to have three lines. And the Bollinger Band uses standard deviations. It's set to two. It's a calculation from the middle moving average, which is usually 20 periods. Now, the upper and lower band, they're going to contract and expand depending on the volatility of the market. Now, there's different ways you can use the Bollinger Bands as a swing indicator. And a good use for 
any indicator that uses bands or channels is to look for price to engage with the bands. So with this chart here, whenever price pierced the upper or the lower band, we would look for a pullback to around the midline. But then the issue becomes when the volatility compression comes into the instrument. Once those bands shrink and they stay in this condition, a pullback's no longer viable, right? There's no price swing that you can exploit. So you'd want to consider the formation of a trading range. Then you can play a breakout of the range for one clean swing. That'd be your goal. And that effect where those bands are ballooning apart, that's one reason I prefer Keltner channels that uses an ATR. Some traders like the balloon effect because to them it tells them information about the market. For me, I don't use them. Indicator four, price patterns. It's not an indicator in the traditional sense, right? But price patterns do indicate certain conditions in the market. And I suggest you spend some time here in section four, now, there's a lot of patterns for a swing trader to use, a lot of different names. I'll be honest with you, I don't concern myself with the textbook definition of the pattern. And I consider most of them just a consolidation in price, right? Price just stopped moving in the direction and is doing something different. Now, patterns, they look great in textbooks, right? They do, but when you read them on a chart, it's different. And to keep it simple, look for a pause in the advance or the decline of the price connect the highs and lows of the price action that comes after that and look for a break. And that's your trading opportunity. And I want you to know on this chart, I just used the 20 EMA to help frame the market trend. Can you make a strategy this simple? Absolutely, you can. You just have to break down what your trading process is and then find setups to managing your risk. That's it. See that black arrow? Did you need a momentum indicator to tell you that something has changed in this market? Probably not. So when you can learn to decipher price action clues like that, it's a really worthwhile skill that you should learn. Let's wrap it up. Then let me say with only a few indicators, you can define a trading strategy for any instrument, right? Your selection is going to depend on your beliefs about the market. My approach, look for momentum in the market and then get into the next swing if there is one. And if you go back to section four that we talked about, uh, this is a fairly good representation of my personal approach to trading. And one of the great things when you just look at swing trading as taking one clean swing is momentum or lack of can actually help you manage risk. So when a swing trader sees momentum coming out of the current move that they're in, reducing risk by moving the protective stop loss helps avoid a full 1R loss. And honestly, I very rarely will take a 1R loss on anything. So you design a strategy. You know, I could have broken this all down into a working strategy for you. Uh, there would have been very little benefit for you. There's enough tips in this video about what to look for and how to use these indicators. Your next step, just piece the parts together, but ensure you cover risk protocols. And feel free to go through our entire channel here, right? There's far too many videos to list that can actually get you on the path to designing a swing strategy for yourself. There really is. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you like it. Subscribe to it. We'll talk to you soon.